the engine started sputtering, the right engine and the left engine, or the left engine and the right engine, or whatever. And what was happening was uh, the uh, plane was running out of gas. The pilots uh, found out they screwed up and ran out of gas. And as um, the engine started sputtering, the first one, when the first one started sputtering, I jumped up and ran to the cockpit and I wanted to figure out what the world was going on. And uh, knowing that this was fixing to be a disaster, uh, in my mind, because I know what 60,000 pounds of weight will do for you, you know, and um, none of those people on that plane had been in the military or none of them were in construction or none of them knew anything about weight and the factors of that. And they, they, uh, they, they were musicians and crew, wannabe musicians and uh, people like that, that was just music people. They knew nothing about what they were just fixing to get into. I knew what we were in for in my mind and I was mad as hell. Them pilots were putting us in this situation put me in it. At 645.49 seconds in 55 Victor Mike, we're at 4.5. We had descended from 6,000 feet in that couple of minutes to 4,500 feet, coming in at a 50 degree angle. And I heard somebody say, trees. And that was the first top of the trees that the plane hit. And I turned to head back to my seat. And I told them right there on that, on that runway, I says, uh, you know, that's not going to make any sense to have an engine problem and fly with it. And they said, well, if the engine just quit running, we have one engine to run on. We got, we can, we can, it's no problem. And they chose to go through the woods or to hide in the woods, uh, one guy did, and not come back and try to help the people that were injured or dead. There, there again, it was getting dark. It was dark. And, uh, but I can't see why he didn't want to come back. This one fella, I ain't going to mention his name. I called him later, years later, and asked him, why didn't he help somebody? You didn't get hurt. You didn't get a scratch on you. Yet she went out there in the bushes and squatted down and hid and looked and watched for an hour, for 45 minutes, for two hours. You, in, why didn't you come back and try to help those people? Ronnie Van Zant had a, an eighth inch, little, little eighth inch, inch nick and a fractured leg in his, a bone in his leg. His own father, when he went to uh, identify the body the next day, October 21st, uh, said also that uh, Ronnie looked when they pulled it, Ronnie out. Ronnie looked like he was asleep. No injuries. He said they just had a little bump right here behind his head, a little, little cut. And Lacey didn't know his leg was broke. He says he just looked like he was laying there asleep. And this massive ball of fire flew out that engine. And the plane was coming up. And I got out of my seat. And I pulled myself up to the cockpit and was holding on to the back of the pilot's seats. Told them to set the plane, turn the plane around because the engine blowed up or it's had a ball of fire blow out or something. They said, nothing's wrong, sit down. Seats, seat belts, briefcases, hand carry bags, junk was piled in here. And on, on the bottom of this pile was Steve, Dean Kilpatrick, Ronnie Van Zandt on the bottom of this massive bunch of bodies. So they took me out to the... Uh, cemetery. And I said, what, 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 where are we going? They said, well, you're going to visit Ronnie. Ronnie didn't make it. And uh, that's the first I knew right then that Ronnie didn't make it. I didn't know it for the whole month. Nobody told me. I guess my, you know, they said that your condition was so bad that they didn't want to, to try to set you back any. And um, sad situation. And I was, you know, yeah, I was, I was uh, panicky, freaking out. I was just pissed off about uh, being in that situation. Being in a tub, 60,000 pound tub, is going to hit the ground. Uh, yeah, I'm still mad about it. It still pisses me off. For a while, it was a big shock. I mean, I was real upset um, that he didn't make it. Still am upset that he didn't make it, you know, and uh, really I kind of like, probably deep, deep down inside, I blame myself a whole lot.